uh, I would like to introduce now Lou Kerner. He is the founder of Crypto Oracle Collective and founder of Crypto Mondays. By the way, just give him a nice applause. <laughs> Welcome, Lou. I, okay. I mean, spoiler, I know we're having Crypto Mondays today. Yes, so, yes. exactly. So, so if you haven't so. been to Crypto Mondays yet, you'll have a <laughs> chance to go to one tonight. Hopefully, you'll come. Um, so I'm Lou Kerner, giving a, call, a, a talk called 10 Thoughts on Community, and I get up on stage. Come on, already? I'm at eight minutes? Come on. So, uh, 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 but first, you know, I really like to thank uh, Liat and Rob and the entire Horizon team. What an awesome event this has been. Oh, my God, so first class. And actually, the fact that they have a whole block and are given an hour of time to talk about community really it was a reflection that they appreciate how important community is, and for me, community is everything. Um, and so, 10 thoughts, and so, you know, I, I start with, as uh, Rob said in his talk, path dependency, right? How did I become a person to sit here talking about community and for, you know, and about crypto? So it turns out I ran a company called Bolt. Uh, we were the largest social network in the world before MySpace, peaked at 23 million kids, uh, 2003 to 2006, uh, I did eight acquisitions of other companies. I was the first person called Zuckerberg at Facebook and offered to buy Facebook about a month after he launched. So I've been thinking about community for 20 years. I ended up becoming an angel investor, actually buying some shares in Facebook, buying some shares in Meetup and other, uh, uh, you know, social network related, community related things. And then I saw the crypto light on June 29th, 2017. And what I saw was for the first time in history, we had a tool set to solve for the community instead of the man in the middle. And I thought that was going to be the biggest thing to happen in the history of humanity. But I didn't know exactly what it was. And I took about uh, uh, three months to come up with a construct. And I published it on Medium. And it was called Seven Thoughts on Crypto After Three Months Down the Rabbit Hole. And it was the most read thing to add crypto for three days, after which I was the third most influential crypto blogger in the world, which did, according to Medium, which did two things. It made me a guy in crypto. And it proved the first of my seven thoughts on crypto, which is nobody knows anything. That we're at the very beginning of this brand new thing and nobody has any idea what it's going to be. So I go around now and I talk about community. And I start with, well, what is Crypto Web 3? It's a series of technologies enabling decentralization powered by community. That's the tech perspective. I also have an ethos perspective to me what it means. And I got mine from this incredible book called Sacred Economics. And to me now, when people say, what is Bitcoin, what is crypto? To me, what it is, is, you know, I feel that I grew up uh, in a culture of greed. And I was taught that the more I took for myself, the better. I got to tell you, it made a lot of sense. Like stuff, good at getting it, working out well. But it turns out that there are other communities that are communities of giving and community of generosity. And to me, that's what crypto is about. And so what is community? What's, how do you begin to define community? It means different things to different people. If I had time, I'd ask different people in the audience, but my time is short. So what is community to me? When I hear different people's definitions, I say, well, if you distill that down and distill that down, what a community is, is it's an ecosystem where when it works, everyone gets more out of it than they give. And when that happens, that is really magical. And, you know, I've started decentralized communities, Crypto Mondays tonight, started in New York in September, uh, January 2018, now in 38 cities around the world, including Milan. Uh, and the macro lesson I've learned in five years is, of being 24-7 crypto, the more you give to the community, the more the community takes it, multiplies it, and gives it back. And to me, it's all about giving value to the community members you know, also known as token economics. And mostly we're at the very beginning of this thing, and so most people are thinking about giving the thing that we all want. Everybody wants money. Well, you know, and money's great. Give your community members money. But, you know, uh, I'll, I'll tell you some stories about it later. You can give them the Bitcoin, that's awesome. But you can give them other things. The problem is if you give them a dollar, it costs you a dollar, by definition. But you can give them other things that actually are, are free for you to manufacture. I learned about this when I was running my social network, Bolt, 
and we were trying to get kids to interact with advertising. We couldn't get them to do that, um, couldn't pay them enough money, but eventually we started a badge program that would scroll, scroll around their profile, conferring status in our community. 10% of our members, 23 million members, were badge whores, and they'd do anything for a badge that would scroll around their profile, conferring status, free for us to make, valuable to other people. We have NFTs and other things that we can give them. So non-cash incentives are going to be huge. Money's great, but non-cash incentives are really what's different about this than before crypto. And I have a corollary to my definition. And the corollary is a community can scale highly correlated to what I call value delta. So a community manufactures for something for community members at a cost of X. And community members get it and they value it at Y. And the bigger the difference between X and Y, the bigger the community can become. Uh, and that's why, you know, I call that value delta. So the bigger the value delta, the bigger the community become. And that's why the biggest communities in the world today are the things with the biggest value deltas. And we have a collective name for those things. We call those things religions. They create faith at 50 cents a book. We know how much people value their faith at. And, you know, and, and I'm not being pejorative about religion at all. I'm saying what awesome communities. Oh, my God. And that's why they've scaled to billions of people and lasted thousands of years. So the size of the community is correlated to value delta. So you can give them faith. So um, to me, when I was managing a community, what I came to realize is the most important metric, the only thing that really mattered, doesn't matter the size of your community. I mean, it's a number. I used it. We were 23 million kids. It doesn't matter how many people are in your Telegram group. To me, it's a totally meaningless number. The question is how many people are engaged in your Telegram group, right? How many people are engaged in your community? Because that's what the metric of community is. It's engagement. And if you're in a community, either your engagement is growing or you're dying. Communities working together, this is a dinner coin center, $1,000 a, a plate dinner, the entire community at Consensus in Austin a few months back. It's awesome. I'm a huge believer that communities working together, two communities, five communities, 100 communities, oh my God, the power of that, when we have the tools to harness that, is going to be incredible. So um, before I saw the crypto light, I started writing about the profound implications of these five massive companies that were having an ever-increasing market share of all market crap created by technology. Um, and I called them FAMGA, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. And FAMGA. And when Facebook rebranded to the metaverse, um, the most cogent thing that I read on it was Jack Dorsey said that it's not a surprise that the only one of the big five tech companies that is all in on the metaverse is the only one that's still run by its founder. Zuckerberg gets it. And for me, the moment in time that we're at today is we are in a fight for the soul of the metaverse. And it's us, the community, against FAMGA, which is epically like Star Wars. And, you know, we're the alliance and they're the Death Star. And most of the time, unfortunately, the Death Star wins. So we're in a fucking war for the soul of the metaverse. Got 40 seconds. You know, uh, uh, Rob mentioned something about toxic maximalism and shit like that. When I first got it, I said, oh my God, that's horrible. We got to cap down on it. This is a picture from something called the Altalina. Check it out. The Altalina taught me that revolutions are messy. And that you need passionate people to win a revolution. You get passionate people, you know, it's a double-edged sword, but that's what you need. So I actually think all of that toxicity is actually a feature, not a bug of the revolution. The crypto crash isn't a crash. This is Amazon up 65x. Is that a bubble when it first started its first couple years? A couple years later, it was down 95%. So the question is, is that a bubble and a crash? No. Turns out, this is what it is today. It's an imperceptible blip, right? And if crypto is going to be what I think it's going to be, that's, you know, the crash that we're in today is this imperceptible blip in a few years. 
Uh, and I've, got, I've only had two price targets since I was an equity analyst. One was on Facebook. The second, I have a million dollar price target on Bitcoin in 2031. Um, I get there by math. Whoop. Um, and there's something called the Mare's Law, it's fundamental, which is we tend to overestimate the effect of a technology in the short run and underestimate in the long run. That's where we get bubbles and crashes. Um, you know, and we're here today. Oh my God, thanks so much, Horizon Labs, for you know, having this event. It's an awesome event, and let's fucking go. Thanks. <laughs>